Welcome back from uh, FS Derek to another train simulator um, adventure. Got the passengers loaded, and uh, today we're on the um, high speed line, and we're going from Ebbs Fleet International to St Pancras via Stratford and back and this is a, a train I bought yesterday um, been waiting for it to come on offer it was on the steam summer sale package with a load of other stuff um, so I've got a, quite a few routes and a couple of trains for £17 this was 10 on its own the reason why I've wanted, been wanting to buy this for a long time is this is a train I travel on personally and um, uh, for those of you who, who've got this sort of simulation, I'm assuming you're possibly rail, you know, interested rail enthusiasts, and uh, so I'm going to take you not only through the simulation, through through the, um, the scenario, so that you can see a bit about, uh, you know, what you might be buying if you buy it, but uh, also give you a bit of background on um, on the actual route from the perspective of someone who actually travels on the train. So we're due off at uh, 1327, so I'm just in about 30 seconds time. The uh, modelling on the train itself is, is pretty, pretty good, I mean, and is, you know, is indistinguishable, and the stations themselves are excellent as well. Um, Ebbs Fleet as a station is uh, just on the south side of the Thames, um, and you'll you'll see that the first tunnel we go through is actually the um, is the Thames we go under the Thames so let's just get uh, started the, the first thing I noticed on this train is that unlike the um, ice train, the German train, the um, Intercontinental Express um, there's no speed regulator, so you have to be a little bit more careful about uh, speed limits. In other words, it has to be driven pretty pretty well manually. There we go. But it, it is nippy, so be careful. Here you've got um, everything in kilometres per hour, and here you've got everything in miles per hour, so it's a little bit confusing at first. So you can either follow this if you want to stick to miles per hour, or you can follow these two if you want to um, stick in kilometres. It's only about the second time I've driven this train, so um, don't expect too much. There's, a, there's obviously some little um, triangle here that tells you whether you're accelerating or deaccelerating, which is good. Let's just pop out the front and check we've got the right lights on. Yep, we've got the uh, white lights on the front. down into the tunnel and uh, putting on a bit of speed so I'll just check that okay now we're cleared up to 225 kilometers an hour or 140 miles an hour as you can see here so at the moment we're going under the Thames um, there are two other ways of crossing the Thames estuary the very earliest was the Dartford Tunnel which is a road tunnel, two two road tunnels, and the uh, most recent one is the QE2 bridge, which a lot of people call the Dartford Bridge. Yeah. There's a movement to have it called the Thurrock Bridge, because Dartford's on one side of the estuary and Thurrock is on the other, and Thurrock said that uh, Dartford, you know, Sarkis said to Dartford, you've got the tunnel, so we won the bridge. 
of the bridge was going to be much more impressive than the tunnel. So Tartford said no, people are not going to understand why um, uh, on the wrong side of the tender, uh, why it's um, the best queue there. You can see the um, bridge there. It's a toll bridge, it's about two pounds to go. Coming the other way, you see that bridge, and you know you're about to dive underground. But anyway, to cut a long story short, uh, Dartford said no. That's going to be confusing if we people are used to the Dartford Tunnel. They're going to want to. They're not going to know where the Tharac Bridge is. And anyway, why should you? Um, why should Tharac um, have a bridge named after it? Because basically, you're, you're a tiny little place no one's ever heard of. It. To which Tharac replied. Um, exactly as Dartford was before the bridge was, before the tunnel was built. So nobody knew, nobody heard of Dartford until they got the tunnel. Anyway, we stepped in and insisted it should be called the QE2 bridge. So that's what settled the argument. On the left here, um, we've got Rain and Marshes, which is um, uh, a bird uh, reserve. Place of the flat marshal area just you know, over here. And there's a bird watching tower. Which you can always see when you go past. So they've not done a bad uh, job. This bridge here, the sort of slanty bridge, is uh, very characteristic and again it's a uh, something to look out for. We've not quite done the bridge supports properly because the bridge is actually um, supported on a load of circular pillars, uh, like struts. Now we've got, uh, we've down here, we've got just under 10 miles to go to Stratford. these flashing things are not too, not too uh, concerned about the right uh, speed. This is trying to tell me the speed. On the right hand side here, all these industrial units again are very um, characteristic of the um, Essex, which is where we are. Essex is quite this is a very flat and uh, quite industrial. basically going underground until we get to King's Cross. And the reason for that is that um, Essex is reasonably uncrowded and uh, they were able to build the line across the marshes um, because they had the space and then as soon as they got to um, Stratford, you know, it was impossible to build a new high speed railway. So they had to go for the ground, so, which was expensive because obviously the it's far it's far more to build up the line up. We just try and jump into the passenger seat, and you can see there. I think that while you're um, if you're in the passenger seat, you can stay in it while you go on the ground and then jump to the cab. But, but I don't, for some reason, I don't seem to be able to jump from the. Um, the driver's cab to the, to the passenger, which is a shame. Now, 
Um, a couple of criticisms about the model. The when you are sitting as a passenger and you are underground, you can't see anything at all. Um, if you sit in the passenger seat and um, look out the window on this train, you actually can see lights going past and this sort of uh, graduated um, lighting in the tunnel, which is which is pretty unfortunately pretty unrealistic. The other thing is that the lights don't seem to make much difference. If I turn them on, that's the off, that's the on, that's the on, that's the on, and I really would expect the um, lights to make more of a difference in the tunnel. Right, two miles to go. Still doing 100 miles an hour. It's flashing 130, which I presume is an advisory. Try hit it. You won't see me um, using the mouse on these controls. I prefer to use the um, A and D key. Accelerating and decelerating. And we're going to climb into Stratford. All these Ebbsfleet and uh, Stratford are relatively new stations and uh, they're just uh, concrete and nothing else. They're pretty unestetic. I don't even think they were, were um, very nicely decorated for the um, Olympics, to be honest with you. One thing I did see, which was unusual, which is during the Olympics, um, they put um, a timber, uh, they raised the surface of the platform by, by about four inches by putting a sort of a timber temporary surface on it. Uh, which, you know, and there's a lot, a lot of timber on it. Today. to worry too much about fitting the train on the platform because as you can see it's the platform is a lot longer than the train. Um, in fact, um, that sound is completely authentic. That's just see there's the you know, 12 coach stop up the end there. Um, and another sort of idiosyncrasy of this station is it's sort of built for expansion so um, these platforms aren't used and this walkway isn't used in fact most of it's cordoned off <laughs> it's, it's far too big I don't know how it coped during the Olympics but uh, uh, even now you know you, you can't exit so. why are most of the exits Right, let's leave the brakes on. This high-speed train, or HS1, was built for the Olympics. Um, and in fact, this next bit is the bit that it was built for. Because it was built to get people from London to Stratford, and Stratford back to London as fast as possible. And the next bit um, takes about seven minutes. And is entirely underground.
Right, that's the doors uh, locked up. The trains are made by Hitachi and um, the rail yard isn't actually modelled on this uh, line but if you uh, if you take another branch of the HS1 to Ashford you'll find that the uh, rail yard is at Ashford and it's, then that's very impressive to see all these trains lined up Especially after dark, funnily enough, because um, I presume to stop vandalism and people spray painting the trains, they have a series of um, vertical lights along each siding and uh, it's extremely well illuminated. And when there are no trains in the yard, it's, it's quite an impressive lighting display. Now what you can do is zoom in a bit, which I think is probably um, more in tune with the sort of more human field of view in, in terms of what you concentrate on. So, warning, you should just press Q to clear that. And we're giving it plenty of welly because we're a little bit behind time. Not to try not to be too late on this. come out of the tunnel and the passenger is queue to start to stand up and start the go tunnel bring all your belongings together because you know you're very close to some hackers. I'll try if we can to have a quick um, station over there. That's why I said not much of it. Literally, although they obviously extended the high speed line down to Ashford and Bamsham, this seven minute strip is the whole reason it was built. I've seen some videos of this trip where um, the hook and the horns on time, and uh, that's the don't get that. They don't. They don't. Uh, in fact, in, in general, the service is very fast, pretty punctual, and um, they don't get around. As you can see, there's sort of quite a lot of building work going over on the left, um, and this and this aggregate um, facility on the left-hand side again is quite accurate. In the same way as when you come into Victoria Station, you tend to look out for the um, bassy dogs and cats home. They've done a pretty good job of uh, modelling this. Instead of being a building site there, now it's all, it's pretty well um, built on. This is 
is um, some tanker station here and uh, it's it's a, a massive massive hotel it's renovated at the cost of millions and is built entirely out of brick goodness knows how many bricks this part of the station on the right is the Eurostar um, part. And this is this is this is very accurate. This is exactly what it looks like. Apart from the fact there's only one bench on that uh, platform, so <laughs> you can't. Uh, Put too many benches there, um, and uh, there's a lift in the corner there which they haven't modelled. Now, let's have a quick look around and see how all they've done. This is pretty good. This is a this is a famous old clock. Down there, there's a statue of uh, Betjeman. Outside, oh no, this is this is very good. This is what it looks like. And this, so uh, this is the main part of the station, and this is the sort of the um, the extra bit. And now, where I am is the Eurostar bit, and then you can see we've got platforms 11, 12, and 13 are, are dedicated to the Kent lines. Now, we've switched ends, so, while we're waiting, we've still got a couple of minutes, so let's have another look around and see what's what. Yeah, so that's all the building site there, they've got that right. And that's the um, aggregate yard, which is all correct. So I'm going to give them a nine and a half out of ten for this. This is this is pretty good. As for as for, <laughs> for this lot of zombies, <laughs> nil, nil point. <laughs> Honestly, rather they actually turned the passengers off <laughs> than than left them than left them doing what they're doing. So, back we go. As you can see, it doesn't take long. Timeliness bonus. Excellent. Q. And, uh, position one. Off we go. Just um, let's just watch ourselves go out. This is a sight you don't want to see. <laughs> if you're trying to catch a train, what does it say on there? Some Pancras International. Well, of course, that is correct. Um, on, it would have been correct on the way here, but it's, um, it's not correct on the way back. Now I'm still driving this on the um, speed limits and everything from here, so you can drive it remotely. The internal modelling again is very good, and thank goodness there are no passengers in here. This is all absolutely accurate. Power socket under seat, as all those only under two seats. If you're on your mobile phone, uh, you need to. Um, this is not really the first part of the tunnel. But this is the point at which you need to say to people when you go into the tunnel. 
I won't be able to talk to you. I guess I uh, should get into this tunnel and that's it. No, no, no. Although you have got a console to drive this train from this position, one of the biggest drawbacks is that um, I don't think the entrance of that tunnel is quite right over, I think. Yeah, this is a good idea. Now you see what I mean about being able to see the sides here? That's not right. That was, that was the problem with not being in the cab. I was just going to say to you, um, there's no, um, you know, you, you can't see any of this. This should really be black. And if we jump in the cab and then try and get back, oh, so that's weird. So that's going to be a couple of matches just to get sort of perspective that we would normally want. Obviously, if you were driving this thing in real life and you decided to drive it from the second carriage back, you'd expect something to go wrong, wouldn't you? <laughs> sure enough, it did, did. So, we're heading out west. No, east, sorry. We're heading out east. Um, and first stop, Stratford. Olympic Park, we, um, I always wanted to go to the Olympic Games and uh, used to watch the Olympic Games in other countries and think how marvellous it must be to, to have gone. Never had the money to travel abroad and go. And then of course when it came to the UK I was very happy because I thought, you know, lifelong ambition I'll be able to afford to go to the Games. Um, but then when it did come come here and we despite having having to pay for the train which the passengers who travel on the train had, had some money put on their tickets to pay for this um, but the way that they sold the tickets for the Olympic Games was that they they didn't let you you know buy them normally on oh, that would be too easy they asked you to specify what's the most you'd be prepared to pay for some tickets got you to order them all at once so that um, basically there are only two outcomes you either overbid and spend thousands of pounds or got some tickets or, or you underbid and you got nothing and I thought I was unfortunately one of those people who um, underbid and got none so we um, you know and then they said oh no well don't worry if you didn't get any in the first round there'll be a second round and a third round or whatever and then I think after the second round we gave up is about the maximum braking because if you look on this gauge here anything higher than that puts it in the red. Here's our 12 carriage stop some lunatic. This is in seeing the train come in. Yeah, so um, so I've not even been in the Olympic Park yet. I think that's still off bounds, although they have opened up parts of it. But uh, I've never seen the Olympic Stadium or been been on the Olympic Park or anything. So I've given up on my goal of going to the Olympics. And then, of course, when you watched on the telly, which we had to. Um, It was, 
it was rather annoying to see that um, all the seats that were empty, you know, thousands and thousands of seats reserved for politicians and international delegates from here, there and everywhere, the best seats, and quite frequently um, completely empty. Crazy system. Right, find a leg. But it's very um, fast as train and it's very cheap actually. It's not incredibly expensive if you travel off peak. If you travel, if you're commuting on it, it's very expensive. But if you're travelling off peak, and you get what they call a network rail card, which saves you one third of the cost of the ticket. Um, you can get to London from Canterbury, um, which is just over 60 miles away, and for and back for about uh, 12 pounds each way. I mean, there's a, a slower, cheaper way of doing it, but for 12 quid. I mean, if you, uh, you, can, you can spend £12 getting in 60 miles on the train and then, and then spend another £12 getting a taxi for the last 300 yards. DC is the um, looking up through the shoe of the third rail, and the CTR is the
supposed to be at Amphleet 1404, we've got an ETA at 1405, so we've lost about 90 seconds. I mean, it's only the first time I've driven the rules, so. Uh, so I'm talking about concentrating here. Which is why they don't allow them to be in the cab. Yeah, we'll have to go back and look at So, don't forget, then you can see the Olympus Bridge. It's time to go down the tunnel, but we've got that slanting bridge, the bridge that crosses over here, not this one. Another one, probably. Cool, antics or something. Another one down. It's a shame, it's a tiny thing, but it's a sort of. Um, Thing that you notice when you pass it. So that's the um, feeder. Unlike a lot of trains, if the emergency brake is deployed on this, you can reset it uh, without coming to a full stop. And you do that literally by pressing Q to cancel the alarm and then dragging the throttle down to um, its fullest extent and then um, releasing it and then putting it up to um, whatever level of brake and acceleration you want. So that's it, so we've gone under the Thames from north to south, we're now in Kent. Uh, we're supposed to be in the station about now, so we've done too bad. It'll be about a minute late. On the next part of the journey, which we're not going to do, but if we were going to do the next part of the journey, we'd be to uh, Ashford. It's quite a long way journey and um, you can easily make up a minute on that leg. There we go. It's a shame this game isn't multiplayer. But, uh, short of someone doing the signalling and someone else doing the driving, um, it's a bit difficult to know exactly how you could make it multiplayer. Well, I think there are plenty of people who would, you know, play it together if it was. That's the back end of the train on the platform, so, as I say, all these, these are all far too long. Platform 6, and that's the 12 car stop. <laughs> Hasn't started raining. Yeah, it's probably about um, it'll be about three minutes late, I think. 
Anyway, we've got a positive score. We're 551. And we haven't killed anyone. That's the main thing. Anyway, I hope it's been interesting and I've given you a bit of a history of the line. Uh, if you ever come to Kent, then um, by all means do take a trip on this train. I think it's well worth it. Seven hundred and twenty-eight. There we go. Not bad. Okay, I'll um, see you next time.